Antenatal care aims to optimize pregnancy outcomes for women and baby. Prenatal visits are used to detect high-risk pregnancies and to track the pregnancy's progress and growth of the fetus. Prenatal care also includes preconception counseling, which help to assess a spectrum of social, behavioral, environmental, and biomedical risk for woman fertility and pregnancy outcome. Now, pregnancy consists of three trimesters, the first lasting for the first 12 weeks of pregnancy, the second between week 13 to 27, and third from week 28 to 40. During of these trimesters, the obstetrical council focuses on different aspects of maternal and fetal health. Antenatal visits until the 28 week of pregnancy should be in every month. From the 28 week of pregnancy until 36 week, it should take place in every two weeks. From the 36 week of pregnancy until birth, it should be in every week. However, in high-risk pregnancies, frequent visits are usually warranted. There are several ways that we can confirm pregnancy and we can establish gestational age. We're going to talk about each of these and talk about risks and benefits and why one test is better than other. So first of all, let's talk about last menstrual period. If we know a patient's last menstrual period and cycles are regular, we can determine the gestational age and we use something called Nagel's rule. So what we do is we take the last menstrual period, subtract three months and we add seven days. So if a patient tells us her last menstrual period is September 1st, we subtract three months and we add seven days and we would uh, know that her due date is June 8th, 2022. We can also confirm pregnancy through a urine pregnancy test. Now, the urine pregnancy test is a qualitative test. That means that it either tells that the patient is pregnant or the patient is not pregnant. But this does not tell us how far along the pregnancy is. Next is a serum pregnancy test. Now, this is a quantitative test. This one tells us exactly how much beta HCG is in the blood. With that serum test, because we can determine the amount of HCG, we can use that to help us with our ultrasound to determine if we should or should not see something in the uterus to help establish gestational age. When the beta HCG level is at least 2000, we should be able to see something in the uterus on transvaginal ultrasound. When the beta HCG is 6000, we should be able to see something on the uterus on abdominal ultrasound. Speaking of ultrasound, this is the most accurate way to determine the gestational age. We expect with ultrasound in the first trimester that when we measure the fetus from the crown rump lengths that it will be within one week of the last menstrual period. We will talk about this in much more detail in future videos. Now let's talk about routine labs in initial prenatal care. First, blood type and Rh factor. We do want to know the patient's blood type and if they are Rh positive or negative. Why is that? Well, if the patient is Rh negative and the baby is Rh positive, Mom can make antibodies against positive blood types, and during her next pregnancy, if that baby is positive, those antibodies will go and attack pregnancy. So we want to know that we can do preventive things during the pregnancy, so that those antigens and antibodies do not cross placenta. In addition, during our initial prenatal visit routine screening, there are some infections that we need to screen for. First, rubella. Nowadays, most women are rubella immune because they did receive vaccination as children. However, sometimes even with the vaccines, we do not build up the immunity to rubella. So it is recommended that we screen to determine if the patient is rubella immune or non-immune in the first trimester. Unfortunately, if they are non-immune, we are still not be able to give vaccine until after the delivery. HIV test should also be done. 
Moving on, from there is recommended that all women get screened for syphilis through the Rapid Plasma Regain or Venereal Disease Research Laboratory tests in the first trimester. If they are in, in a high risk of area for contracting syphilis, it is recommended they get screened in the second and third trimester as well. Because of the risk of transmission to the fetus, it is recommended that pregnant women should also get screened for hepatitis B at their initial prenatal visit. Now, also, as part of the initial prenatal visit screening, if the patient hasn't done pap smear in the last three years, and if they are at least 21 years old, it is recommended they get pap smear for their baseline labs, as well as cultures for gonorrhea and chlamydia. Women should also be screened for hemoglobinopathies and genetic diseases. There are other routine screening tests that are done through pregnancy. One is the anatomy ultrasound. This is done between 18 weeks of gestation to 22 weeks of gestation. At this anatomy ultrasound screening test, we look for all structures of the fetus to make sure they are within the normal limits. We look at the brain, we look at the heart, and the intestines. Again, looking to see if there is any structural abnormalities. Pregnant ladies should also get screened for gestational diabetes. Now, we will have a whole lecture devoted for gestational diabetes, but in to uh, keep with our theme and discuss about how we screen for it, this is done between 24 to 28 weeks of pregnancy. We do uh, the 50 gram oral glucose tolerance test and if the patient has a random glucose level of 140 milligrams per deciliter, they are considered to have a positive screen for gestational diabetes. Then we will uh, do a confirmatory test which is a 3 hour test. In this test, they come and get fasting blood sugar, drinking 100 gram of glucose and their blood would be withdrawn after 1, 2, and 3 hours. If they have two values abnormal out of four values, they would be considered having gestational diabetes. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe our channel. Thank you.